Join us on today's episode of Wake Up With Hope as our friends from The Healthy Foodie share another one of their healthy recipes. We will also have music by Resonance, a devotional from Pastor John Bradshaw, and more. You are sure to be blessed. Don't, Don't miss, miss a thing. thing. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. You know, we are thrilled you're joining us this Wednesday morning at Wake Up With Hope. We sure are, friends. It is during this time of the year that we start to see flowers blooming all around us. And some of us are enjoying the beautiful iris flower. Maybe you have some of those beautiful flowers in your own backyard or community. Mm. And did you know that this beautiful flower, the iris, created by God, comes in over 200 different species? Wow, that's amazing. It is. They mainly originate from parts of Europe and Asia. Mm, iris is also come in many forms, shapes, colors, and sizes. And the sword-like foliage is attractive when the plant is not in bloom. Mm. <laughs> the amazing thing about irises is that even they even grow in dry, mm. semi-desert climate and colder, rocky, mountainous areas. And they grow in less than desirable places. Mm. <laughs> and what a reminder to us, friends, that even when we face less than desirable circumstances in our own lives, we can still be joyful and loving. We can still shine in the midst of darkness as we stay close to Jesus. And with all that, today is National Bring Flowers to Someone Day. <laughs> so why not pick up some beautiful irises today or another flower that you enjoy and share them with someone today? Uh, I'm sure you're going to make their day. So let's begin by taking a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history in 1937, Madeleine Albright, the first female Secretary of State in the United States, was born Marie Jana Korbelova in Prague, Czechoslovakia, now the Czech Republic. Her father, Czech diplomat Joseph Korbel, led the family to England after the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1939. While she initially believed their move was political, Albright later discovered her family's Jewish heritage with three of her grandparents perishing in Nazi concentration camps. After World War II, they returned to Czechoslovakia, but later immigrated to the United States in 1948 following a communist coup. Madeleine Albright's journey from her family's displacement due to war to her remarkable achievements reflects the resilience and strength that we can find even in adversity. Despite facing the horrors of Nazi occupation and later communist rule, Albright rose above these challenges to become a trailblazer in American diplomacy. We're reminded that even in the darkest moments of our lives, God is with us, guiding and strengthening us, and we can always find hope in God's provision and in His faithfulness. Mm, amen. All right, crunchy kimbap is what's being served today as the Healthy Foodie shares this recipe with us. <laughs>
Camille Schofield takes us on a trip through the eyes of a dog's life and encourages us to live worry-free. Yeah, so it's, you know, seems many of us are born warriors. What if the stock market crashes? What if interest rates go up? What if I lose my job? And the list goes on. Sometimes when planning my day, I'll say to my wife, eh, I won't worry about that today. I'll worry about that tomorrow. She quickly stops me and says, Neil, would you like to rephrase that? Yeah, good point, I say. I'll think about that tomorrow, not worry about it. You see, worry causes stress. It just eats you up on the inside. It can even make you feel physically sick. But what's the point of worrying anyway? Look at him. Cyrus never seems to worry. He doesn't get all stressed out about his future. He lives in the moment. And yet you think about it. He's got no ability to feed himself. You'd hardly call him self-sufficient. He relies on us for everything. We feed him. We give him a place to sleep. If he's unwell, we take him to the vet. We walk him every day. No matter what he needs, we make sure he's looked after. Cyrus trusts us to fulfil his needs and that enables him to just enjoy life. I guess you could say he lives in the now. He does one thing at a time, loving what he does on each occasion. Okay. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. The reason we don't need to worry is because just as we look after Cyrus, Jesus looks after us. And here's the point. Cyrus is happy because his simple needs are met. He doesn't get depressed worrying about what other dogs think of him. He doesn't look in the mirror and think his collar is not as upmarket as the neighbours or get stressed because his hair's going grey. He doesn't fret because of how much money's in his bank account. He's got none. He doesn't even feel life is unfair because dogs live shorter lives than humans. He's just content. And that allows him to sit and relax, play, or laze around in the sun. If Cyrus could sing, I think his favourite song would be don't worry, be happy. That's his attitude on life. What about you? When we return, we'll have inspiring music from residents. And later, John Bradshaw joins us to share a devotional thought. Don't forget, if you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up. And check out our YouTube page to keep up with everything we have going on. See you back in just a few moments. Think for a minute. Can you hope to find love? Love is not an option. It is a requirement for living. We need love as we need air, water, rest. Not a single thing can withstand its absence. Love is the essence of life and the reason for living. It is the moving force that ignites the smallest living fragments and sculpts the entire universe. Love is what binds eternity and infinity. From beginning to end, everything is about love. For love is not a feeling. Love is a being. God is love. His character is love. Love is not what He has. It's who He is. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from His love. So if you hope to find love, pause and think for a minute. Are you letting love find you? We now have music from Resonance as they sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship. 
worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great and Your heart is kind. For all Your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for. Amen. Wherever you are, remember that we have tens of thousands of reasons to praise God's name. If you're enjoying today's program, be sure to share it and spread a little love. You can also visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up. We have to pause for a quick break, but after the break, we're going to have today's devotional thought by Pastor John Bradshaw. Stay with us. Welcome back. John Bradshaw from It Is Written is with us here today to share a devotional thought. Really good to see you today. I trust your day has started well and that you are looking forward to an incredible day, a great day, blessed of God. Like you, I've been to some fascinating places. I mean, anything could be fascinating, I suppose. One place I went to twice in relatively quick succession that I'll never forget is Auschwitz, Auschwitz Beer Canal. Auschwitz was a concentration camp, Beer Canal, an extermination camp. It was a beer canal where the ovens were. It was a beer canal where the smoke went up the chimneys. It was a beer canal when the tr where the train loads of Jews got off and then they were separated this way to that way to that way to that way. And many of them tragically had their lives taken. I recall being there, you know, and my wife is taking photographs. She's taking pictures of something through a glass window and suddenly I notice that she's crying. I said, what's wrong? She said, I was taking photos of all these shoes and I realized I was focusing on baby shoes, infant shoes, reminding her that babies lost their lives there. Now, babies, I suppose, are no more valuable than a and an adult, but there's something about that that touches your heart and certainly touched my wife's heart. 
it's a tragic place, Auschwitz, Birkenau also. I've been to Flossenburg, I think that's the only other concentration camp I've been to. There are other famous ones, Dachau, just outside of Munich in Germany, Buchenwald and so forth. Auschwitz is in fact in Poland. We were being led around the place on one occasion by a tour guide. And this tour guide was far from happy. It was clear that he was actually rather miserable. It appeared that he was miserable because all day long he dealt with misery. Auschwitz is a museum now and it tells the story of the misery inflicted by cruel people on innocent people. We had the opportunity to share with him and I said to him, kind of what I'm saying to you now, I said, you know, it occurs to me that Auschwitz is a museum. Or was it one of our group who said this? Either way, one of us said, Auschwitz is now a museum. Yes. The horror is over. Yes. Evil didn't win. He said something like, oh, I wish I could believe that or or, or some such thing. But that's what we realized during our time at Auschwitz. Evil didn't win, and it didn't. Auschwitz is a museum today. People are not slaughtered there. People are not exterminated at Birkenau. It's a relic of the past, something we wish we could forget, but something we should never forget. I have said that Auschwitz is a place that nobody should go and everybody should go. It's just that kind of place that influences you like that. But here's the good news, ladies and gentlemen. Evil didn't win. Jesus was nailed to a cross, but he triumphed on that cross. Satan didn't win. He was told in the Garden of Eden that he would bruise Jesus' heel, but that Jesus would bruise his head. He was promised 6,000 years ago in Eden that he would lose and he wouldn't win. And that's what happened. Satan did lose. Jesus did win. There's sadness in the world today. We cannot stop it. Evil is a powerful force. People who have no moral compass or are not guided by God, they're guided selfishly. Now, many of those people are wonderful people who do great good and make good decisions. But at the same time, there are people of that ilk who give themselves over to evil and misery and acts of carnage and you understand what I mean. So we live in a world where hospitals do brisk business, where prisons are full. You don't hear very many empty prisons, where ambulances are kept busy, where emergency rooms continue to tend to people who are the victims of this or that. We live in an evil world. But here's the good news today. Evil doesn't win. You might be subjected to some of that. Illness, disease, loss, bereavement, a funeral, a loved one. You might be the innocent party in a divorce. You have no idea how badly I have been wronged, you might say. Oh, I'm just so sorry if you've had an experience, something like that. I'm sorry. But the good news is evil didn't win and it won't win. There's a tendency on the part of some to allow evil to push them away from God. You get mad with God. You don't understand how God could allow something to happen. It's not just, it's not right, it's not fair. I'll agree with you. Things are frequently unjust, not right, and unfair. But instead of allowing that to bump you out of the arms of God, why don't you allow that to settle you into the arms of God? You're in a terrible accident. You are wrongly imprisoned. You were slandered. Yes, and none of that is God's fault. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus commenting about the the wheat and the tares. In fact, the landowner in that parable, as Jesus tells the story, says, an enemy has done this. Someone endeavored to ruin his livelihood. He didn't say, oh, why did God? He said, an enemy has done this. We live in a world that's full of evil. And it's not going to change anytime soon. But evil doesn't win. 
the horrors of World War II are behind us. We left that and entered into peacetime. Well, it's never long and there's another war, but then there's peace. Situations resolved, damage is done, but peace comes. Evil doesn't win. In the Bible, it didn't win. In the life of Christ, evil didn't win. There was a lot of suffering and hardship in the time of the early church, but evil didn't win. The time of the Reformation, many, many, many millions of people were persecuted and lost their lives. But evil doesn't win. You see, even if you're the victim of something awful, if you're faithful to Jesus, you have eternity to look forward to. Evil cannot win. So we're going to look at this world a little bit differently from now on. You might consider what's happening within the beltway and you might say, oh, I just don't understand. Yeah, you don't and you can't, but that's because imperfect people are wrestling with really, really big problems. You might be looking at what's happening nationally or in your state or in your town, in your church, in your community, your place of work, and you wonder, man, it shouldn't be like this. There's so much going on that's heart-rending and really difficult to endure. While all that might be the case, you can be buoyed up today knowing that evil doesn't win. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. The plan of redemption, the sacrifice rather for the plan of redemption was completed and evil was defeated on that day. So we're looking forward. We're positive now. Christ has won. God triumphs. The church is going to go through. And one day soon, The heavens will depart as a scroll. Jesus will be revealed. Gravity will lose its power on the soles of your feet. And along with all of the redeemed of all ages, you will go up. Evil doesn't win. God wins. Hey, have a great day today. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor John. And thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope and spending your morning with us. We enjoyed our time together. Don't forget, friends, join us tomorrow morning. We'll be talking about the God of the Thorns with Taj Paklov and the Parenting Place will be back. Plus, we will have music and continue our exclusive series on Knowing God with John Peckham. Don't miss it. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Again, that's hope.study. We are sure our free Bible studies will be a blessing to you. Well, we can't leave this morning without sharing our daily Bible promise. Today's Bible promise comes from Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, friend, it's a beautiful promise. It's a simple promise. As you delight in God, He will gladden your heart mightily. Amen. Well, we pray that you have begun this day with a grateful heart because of Jesus' love and hope for you. May the Lord bless you abundantly and have a wonderful Wednesday. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for the strength that we receive from your promises. Today, Lord, our hearts are full and we pray that as we go out into our day and continue on, that you would give us opportunities to share the joy we have in our hearts with people around us. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.